What's up guys, welcome back to the vlog. We've got a heap of EK content for you guys today. As you saw in the last video, we got the uh, subframe out of the car out of the front, and uh, we've made us a bunch of room to start putting this K20 with the F20C transmission made it to it up underneath this car. But before we get started on that, we've got a few things we need to tackle. We need to get the dashboard and all of the stuff underneath the dashboard, the heater core, the AC box, all that stuff, uh, sussed out, potentially removed before we can start cutting the tunnel to make the transmission fit. And I also need to do some work on the uh, on the firewall, which I've already started on this morning, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys along. I need to remove some brackets and some studs. There's a stud right there with a yellow mark on it. There's a bracket right here that needs to be removed, a bracket right here, a bracket right here. And I've already sort of started sanding down where the old studs were that were welded to the firewall so that factory components could be mounted to the firewall with just a 10 mil nut. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing some of that metal work right now, and then I'm gonna jump inside the car, remove the dash, remove potentially the heater core, we'll see. engine bay ready to go basically uh, to the standard that I need it to be today. So now I'm gonna move on to the interior and get this dashboard and steering wheel and everything out of the car and that way we can start test fitting uh, the engine underneath the car and figure out where we're gonna need to cut. dash out now you can see that I've went ahead and removed the gas pedal and the brake pedal for Big Jeff because he's gonna go ahead and actually install our honed uh, developments brake booster delete kit and what that's gonna entail is we're gonna remove the pedal from the assembly and the honed developments kit actually comes with a, um, a template which what we're gonna do is basically line the Line the template up with the hole there, and it gives us a guide. We'll, we'll center punch that, and then it'll it'll move the hole up to here, which is gonna give us a better pivot point, which allows you to delete the brake booster and not lose the pedal feel that you have. So this kit's very comprehensive, very cool. Uh, comes with everything you need to upgrade to a boosterless brake system, which I'm looking forward to, because not only does it really clean up the engine bay, which isn't really the real reason for doing it, it's for the brake feel. Um, but it's gonna really, really, really enhance the um, pedal feel, I'm, I'm hoping. So we'll see, uh, it's gonna be a while before we actually know if that's the case, but uh, Big Jeff's gonna go ahead and drill the hole and get it ready to go back in. Hey. Ricky's here now. Ricky already pulled out the uh, heater core and AC boxes while I was helping Big Jeff. And so now we can actually start to remove some of the sound deadening and start figuring out where we're gonna cut this bad boy.
me show you what we got so far. There is nothing left in the interior of this car to include all the harness that was here. So we started just taking out the requirement stuff necessary for us to start marking, marking and cutting. But as always, when you start taking one thing, you keep going and keep going, and next thing you know, there's... we removed the entire wire harness from the car. There's nothing left when it comes to wires. Um, so we have a pile of everything everywhere for this car right now. So the next plan of, att of attack is, I'm gonna mark what I think I'm gonna be cutting, and this is the actual plan. The plan is, I'm gonna mark around the same brace right here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark around here here and then come up this way and through here and the plan for this is cut that in one piece I'm gonna try to have it in one piece and we're just gonna remove it once we remove it we're gonna put the engine and transmission in this area see where it needs to be sitting at like their final resting place and we are gonna put this on top of the transmission which I'm assuming is gonna be about the size of this fan higher about five inches higher uh, and then we're probably gonna start mocking up braces just to hold it in place probably four braces to hold it in place and then we'll figure out how we are gonna reattach this to the body so my next step is mark it and then probably start cutting so be right back okay while well, Ricky's drafting up our cut lines in there with the paint pen Big Jeff's gonna run outside. We've got a little bit of uh, Pour 15 top coat. This is a direct to paint rust preventative uh, paint and it's a chassis black. So we're gonna go ahead and spray it on the gas and brake pedal holder, which he's always tend to rust up underneath the dash. I don't know why they don't coat them. Probably a cost saving measure, but he's gonna go ahead and throw some of this Pour 15 top coat on there and get that cleaned up so that when it goes back in, it's looking nice and fresh and it's not gonna rust anymore. Think so? Maybe. <laughs> Hope you got your tetanus shot. Yeah. <laughs> Ray Charles cut this? Hey, come down. <laughs> All right, well, we left last night after Ricky cut the hole out of the tunnel. We left because we were pretty discouraged. I was thinking that we were gonna be able to take a minimal amount of material away. I was hoping for the best. It's actually a much worse case than we were anticipating. So check it out. So as you guys can see, the engine is in the location of where it's gonna sit. But for now, we know that we need to bring this motor up another four inches or so. Basically the top of the valve cover needs to be up here, which requires us to actually cut more of the firewall out. Not a big deal. We were trying to keep our factory heater core, and that was for multiple reasons. I know a lot of you guys are probably like, oh, but Mickey, it's gonna be a race car. You don't need a heater core. Well, there's a couple reasons why I wanna keep it. A lot of times when you go to the racetrack, it can rain. And if you don't have proper um, coolant cycle, you don't have any flow of air through a heater core, a uh, heater box, uh, you cannot defrost your windows. So that's one reason. The other reason is it's a longer path for the coolant to flow, which offers more cooling. There's also a small radiator inside the heater core for a minimal amount of additional cooling for the engine. So having that additional uh, coolant flow is always a good thing to have if you can keep it. So I wanna keep it. I've got two routes I can, well, three routes I can go. I can delete it, which I don't wanna do. Uh, we can, since we know we have to cut up higher, we know we have to throw away the OEM version. Um, maybe we find an S2000 box and try to fit that. Um, or I've got a custom solution that I've got in my head that will allow us to add air conditioning condenser, heater core, and a defroster all in one unit and potentially uh, solve all our problems. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think I should do, what you would do uh, if it's for your car. For now, I know I gotta get back to cutting. So I'm gonna pick up where Ricky left off. I need to move this higher. Um, get this engine up in here higher, which means we're going to have to build a bit of a taller tunnel, which is okay. 
um, and we are going to try to keep it looking as OEM as possible. I've seen some other rear wheel drive converted cars using the F20C engine and I've seen how they've done their tunnels and I don't particularly care for the way they turned out. I really want this to look stock so if you don't really know what you're looking at it looks like an OEM tunnel. In order to accomplish that we've saved the top of the tunnel and we're basically going to try to just raise it up and use the stock top of the tunnel. Will we be able to do it? Only time will tell, but that's the goal. So um, let's show the inside, I guess. You guys can see how much material we cut away. So this is the part that Ricky cut out. Um, we're gonna try to retain this section and basically just section in metal here. Probably gonna end up having to cut this off. So as you guys can see here, this is where our shifter plate actually mounts. Uh, if you guys are familiar with an S2000, you know that the center console is actually way up here. It's very tall. Um, so what I'm thinking is we're probably going to end up having to do something quite similar. We stopped our cut here so that we can drop it back down um, in a traditional fashion. And that will also allow us to, if we decide to run the factory e-brake mechanism, that will allow us to still uh, mount it in this location here and run the cables out. Now, with our FCS rear end, it doesn't allow for a factory e-brake setup. So we have to tackle that when we get to it. But rest assured the car will have some sort of brake uh, operated by hand. And it may be a hydraulic e-brake, I'm not sure at this point, but we'll get there when we get there. Anyway, um, so the tunnel, as you guys can see, has been cut. I don't think we're gonna need to cut any more up to about here. Um, we do need to widen this out like our original line was. Uh, and we're definitely gonna need to come up into here some. As you can see, this is our heater core mounts here. And this is where the heater core holes went through. I think we're gonna need to be cutting up into here in the next episode. Um, so you guys need to stay tuned for that. But rest assured, we will get this thing high enough in this chassis. Um, I was trying to do it as delicately as possible, but that ain't gonna work. So it's time to cut. But, but before we move on to that cutting, I've got a couple of new products that showed up today at the shop that I wanna show you guys. We received a package from JDM Ohio Direct. These guys are really cool. Um, they do a lot of importing of Japanese cars and they do a lot of importing of Type R's. So if you guys are into Type R's and stuff like that, check out JDMOhioDirect.com. They're also on Instagram. We'll leave their, um, their handle down below so you guys can check out their page. But they basically buy a lot of cars. They take a lot of cars apart and sell the parts. Um, and they can also import complete cars into Ohio, which is pretty rad. So I reached out to them to see about a couple parts that I was interested in for my car. They went ahead and sent off the thin side moldings. These are different than what we get here in the States. Ours are about twice the thickness and they stand out off the car quite a lot. Now these here are very thin and they actually sit inside of the body. So it fills the molding hole on the side of the car but doesn't stick off the car and look ugly. So they sent that out, that's a six piece kit. All the pieces are here. This is the front fender piece. The door pieces are here in this box. I already checked those out, they're in really good condition. So these are obviously off a championship white Civic Type R, which is pretty rad. Uh, one of my dream cars for sure. They also sent on this awesome CTR wing. Um, don't worry, that's not staying there. I applied that uh, just to give them some extra signage in the video, but uh, essentially what this is, is an OEM Civic Type R wing, which we did not get these here in the States. So having one of these for this car is pretty awesome. So we'll switch between the CTR wing and our, uh, our race wing that we have on there now. Get them both painted, that way we can change the look of the car whenever we feel like it. I love the CTR wing and that was the reason why I wanted to get it from these guys. And the last piece that uh, JDM Ohio Direct sent over was this center armrest. Well, it's basically an armrest delete for all intents and purposes, but this is where your e-brake goes. And in a regular EK, you would have a cubby box or an armrest. In the pursuit of making the lightest car possible, Honda decided that the uh, e-brake only center console would be the best for the Type R. So they went ahead and sent one of these on to me as well. Not sure now that we're modifying the tunnel so heavily that we'll be able to use it, but we are gonna try to do everything within our power to retain this. And that leads me to the last box that we have here today. This is a guy that I've been keeping an eye on for a couple years since I built my EG. The shop is called ODB Welding Works, and he makes a bunch of products that make life easier when you're basically shaving your engine bay or cleaning up your engine bay. Now, I'm not a big shaved engine bay guy, but there are some components in this kit that he sells that will make life a lot easier when we do uh, get rid of some of the holes and things on the firewall. So these are essentially um, 
plates that are pre-cut and numbered to fill the holes on the firewall of the car. And these plates here are actually for the side panels, so it gets rid of the grommets for the wiring. Uh, if you're doing a wire tuck, these big plates here are for the front of the engine bay down by the frame rails. These are labeled EK driver, EK passenger. I didn't notice that until right now. But, uh, as you can see, what these are is basically pre-cut plates that you can mount in the engine bay um, after you remove the seam sealer and some other bits to clearance them. But what this does is it just basically makes your life a lot easier. You don't have, to, if you don't have cutting tools and things like that at your home garage, uh, but you have a welder, um, this is a nice little shortcut to getting this job done. So this big hole here and all these holes in the frame rail all go away with this panel once we tack it into place. This seals it off. Obviously we got to remove this um, seam sealer here because it's in the way, but we'll go ahead and weld those in. And we also have a bunch of um, plugs that he sent as well for the firewall. We're going to use some of those, not all of them. And this is one of the parts that he makes that he's made for many years that I wish I would have used on my EG build and I didn't because I didn't want to spend the money. And that was stupid because now on these cars, the upper control arms, as you guys know, when you go super low, the upper control arm makes contact with the, um, with the upright here. And so what ODB Welding Works does is they actually make these parts that mount on here like this. So you basically cut out this material here, which is usually where it makes contact, is right in this area right here, and you weld these on. And so that raises the strut top up. It allows clearance for your hood, but it gives you that little extra bit of clearance for your upper control arm to travel and not damage your uh, your engine bay. So these will come in real handy. Again, this is something I wish I would have used on my EG, um, but I didn't, now I know. So huge shout out to ODB Welding Works for sending along these great products. These are gonna save Ricky and I a heap of time um, on fab stuff to get these in the car and uh, clean up this engine bay. Anyway, that's all for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the cutting process and sort of the thought process that goes into building a project like this, which is, um, not been done by too many people and a lot of people that are doing a rear wheel drive project are using an F20 or they're using S13, S14 subframes front and rear to make them work. Uh, we're not doing any of that. Uh, this is all going to be custom stuff and I'm excited to show you guys the process of doing this as well as how excited I am to actually own this car. I've dreamed of owning a rear wheel drive EG or EK for over a decade and uh, the fact that I get to share it with you guys is special to me and uh, show you guys the process of how we're actually gonna do it. Right or wrong, this thing will be rear wheel drive when it's done, and I think it's gonna be a great car. So, check out the next video, guys. We're gonna cut some more and get this thing sitting up further and maybe even start mounting the engine and figuring out the front suspension components. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.